This is the story of Silent Night, Holy Night, the world famous Christmas carol. We have to go back to the year 1792, early spring. At this time, in this room, the mother of Joseph Morvelevin, her name was Anna Schäuber. With her in here was her mom, Maria, two half-sisters of Joseph, they have been already on earth, and a cousin called Theresia. Because they can't make enough money with spinning and knitting, they had to accept one of the soldiers living in here also as a lodger. He was one of the guards on one of the gates, and after his night shift, he came up here, and when the family get up, he was using one of the beds. By one of these changes, it must actually happen that Mom Anna get up too late, or the soldier came into the bed too early. Nine months later, our Joseph was born. At this time, the soldier was already away, the servant from the military service and never come back. But before he left, officially, he mentioned that this will be his child. So when Joseph was born, he was called after his father's name. Franz Joseph Moore, out of the Alpine village, the name Maria Pfarr in the Lungau Valley. When Joseph was born, his mother was punished by the government because of the third illegitimate child by nine florins. That was the currency at the time and nearly one year of her earnings. And because she will never be able to pay that off herself, she accepted the offer of the last hangman, the executioner of Salzburg, the most misliked man in town, but rich. This man offered her that he would pay the fine, but he wanted to be the godfather of the child. For Joseph, that was a double social out. In his time, it was bad enough to be an illegitimate child, but having the hangman as your godfather, that is the worst that can happen to you. With this background, no school system will take him. No carpenter, baker, no butcher will give him a job. The life was over before it began. When he was seven, seven and a half, by chance, on the stairs, coming down from the Cappuccino bed, he get in contact to a man, Johann Nepomuk Hirnle, a Benedictiner priest and the conductor of the cathedral's choirs. And this man must hear Joseph singing, because he found the musical talent in the voice of the boy. And when he found out that Joseph was not in school, he came into Mamana and asked, why you waste this talent? Why the boy is not in school? When she told him about the background of Joseph, the hangman, the father who disappeared, he was touched so much by heart that this man now arranged for Joseph to get into the best school in town, the elite school of Sons, in the St. Peter Monastery. 24 boys are accepted every year. A waiting list out of hundreds, aristocrats, higher government people, they try to buy and force their boys into the school. One of the 24 accepted in the next year, R. Joseph. In his personal files, written down as parentsless, father by adoption, Johann Nepomukhirn, the Benedictine priest. Four years later, when he was 12, he plays already three instruments, the violin, the guitar, and the organ. In all the years, he was named specially for his beautiful voice singing in the St. Peter's Church choir under the conductor of Michael Haydn, the brother of famous Joseph. With 13, he was blamed the first time for coming too late to the rehearsals. Underneath a time document as explanation that mentioned that he might be attracted by the German singing in the Collegium Kirche, where he also joins the choir, and that's why he came too late. The Collegium Kirche, the University Church of Salzburg, was the only one in the whole country where the German language was established. All the other services in 500 different parish was held in Latin, a dead language. At this time, one out of thousand were able to communicate in this language. And that has a reason. 1778, five years before Joseph was born, the Archbishop of Salzburg, his name was Colorado. He mentioned to his Catholic priest, please would you be so kind and take some German language into your service as an explanation what this Sunday or this holiday is about. The priest said no. 
when he comes a few years later with the idea again, they say categorically now, and they blame the Archbishop of Salzburg to the Vatican as a Protestant friend. His reaction was to establish the German language into the university church and using this now as a step for musically talented young boys into the university. Even the family background was not what they actually take for this higher education. And that was our Joseph's chance to get into the university. He studied rhetoric, philosophy, theology and composition for three years. Then he was accepted in a priest seminar. In 1815 he became a Catholic priest. So he reaches the top that you actually can reach in a church state as Salzburg was at the time. The first parish that he was sent to was the little Alpine village Maria Pfarr in the Lungau Valley. You remember the hometown of his father, the soldier who disappeared. When Joseph arrived on the 5th of October 1815, he was taken a few days later by Pfarrer Stoff to a little farmhouse. And now the boy, who never met up with his own father, get introduced to his grandfather, still living up there, 86 years old, one of the last bathhouse keepers, and the only man was accepted in a health system run by women. 7,000 people were living in that valley of the Lungau area at the time and only one medicinical doctor around. So you can imagine how important the midwives, the men and women were. For. They know about herbal medicines. Through his grandfather, young, modern, educated Joseph was introduced to a traditional way of living, especially in this valley, strongly influenced by the pre-Christian traditions, out of the Celtic, the Slavic, and the Roman times, in a beautiful harmony with the Christian society, helpful for them that they keep the old traditions so well, was the Tauern Pass. 2,000 meters high, 6,000 feet in the Alpines, a natural border between Salzburg and the Lungau Valley, and then into the valley on a level of about 1,200 meters, 3,600 feet. No way in and out in between October and April. The second reason were the priests up there. Mostly born in the area, they come back and had a tolerant way of handling the traditional way of living. If the people get too much into the traditional way or it was blamed and they had to react, they never shouted on them. They called them back to the church. They let them do the ceremonies in the name of God and they find a Christian name for it. This beautiful harmony was only destroyed once. 200 years earlier, in the year 1600, they sent a priest in the area, was not used to this tradition. Somebody from an upper class family here from Salzburg, who cannot accept the traditional way of living. And from one day to the other, everything was forbidden. You cannot do this to the Longa people. Because what happened was, three years later, from 3,500 families, 2,800 converts to the Protestants. Another three years later, when the Archbishop Consistorium find out what they have done up there, the young priest was removed, and the older priest was sent in that was used to this tradition. One and a half a year later, without 50 families, everybody was back Catholic because now the traditional living was accepted and guaranteed, and that was no need to be a Protestant anymore. In the meantime, they create a new tradition. Because they were not allowed as Protestants to go into the Catholic Church, they do their own service at home. Sundays, they sit together and read out of the German-speaking Protestant Bible. The main holidays, they celebrate in stables or bigger farmhouses where they can come together and more. And because there was no organ around, they used the alpine instruments, the violin, the guitar, the horns, the flutes. And because they can't or they don't want to remember all the Latin words and singing, they put some German songs in between. When they come back to the Catholic Church after 10 years, they brought their instruments. 
and the singing within. Two hundred years later, 1815, Joseph, in the sacristy, get dressed and ready for the Holy Eve service. And that sounds like that. The organ is playing there only till the priest, the three assistant priests and the ministrants coming in to the church and taking place. Then the organ stops. And the alpine instruments take over. The Gloria and Excelsis they are beautiful sing in Latin. The Holy Family, when they're looking for a place and they couldn't find it, and they descended from one house to the other, nobody gives them a place to stay. They sing this in German. And Latin and German songs came along and Joseph was fascinated by the beautiful harmony of the singing. When Pfarrer Stoff, who did the whole service in Latin, did the sermon in German. Liebe Pfarrgemeinde, liebe Schwestern und Brüder, nach dieser Feier der Mitte geht's nun nach Hause in eure Familien und ich wünsche euch noch eine heilige Nacht. He explained to people what Christmas Eve means for him, what it could mean for them, and what this is all about. That was the moment when Joseph had the idea to write a song for us that he actually called so simply Christmas Carol. That he did for guitar, so you can play it outside the church. And that he dated 1816, the following year. In 1995, the only autograph in Joseph's hand was discovered and had the date 1816. He wrote this paper in the year 1822-23 and dated it back. So six years after he created the song in the high alpines in Maria Pfarr. In January 1816, Joseph's grandfather died. He buried him himself in the end of January. Now Joseph starts working very hard. This long walk through the high Alps in between the little farmhouses makes an old lung sickness break up my Joseph. Tuberculosis. Sickness number one of the poor people at his time that he kept from his childhood here in this wet, cold room. When the tuberculosis is not getting better into the year 1817 in June, Joseph was very sick. Pfarrer Stoff brought him back to Salzburg and they put him into the hospital over here. Six weeks he had to stay. In the meantime, Pfarrer Stoff arranged for Joseph that he was sent out to the little parish of Oberndorf. That was so easy because at the time in Oberndorf, a young, also in Maria Pfarrborn priest was established. Joseph Kessler his name. When Joseph arrived, the two together arranged the first service in Oberndorf every Sunday in Latin German mixed singing with the German preacher, as they both had learned in Maria Pfarr, for the happiness of the people, because the first time they understand what's going on in the church. Also happy was the teacher from the neighborhood, Franz Xaver Gruber, who plays the organ in Oberndorf. But somebody, and the Archbishopal Consistorium in Salzburg don't like the idea of having a full church out there. And in the end of November 1817, Joseph Kessler was removed and they sent the older priest in the area, Georg Heinrich Nestler, a traditionalist. The first thing that he did, he cancelled all the German in the service. Immediately, the rehearsals was forbidden for Christmas Eve service. In his church, no German word was allowed only Latin. When Joseph mentioned that even the Lord never talks in Latin, that he has his sermons in Aramaic, he was immediately shouted. The old man calls his background up. An illegitimate child like you 
what Mother Church has done to you. Is this now the thanks that you're giving back to us? In the year 1818, a real conflict came up. Joseph, modern young priest, who goes out with his guitar and his God to the people, they actually don't care so much about church or losing their trust or their believing and worked on them. The old man who stays in the church and wait with his God till the people come and see him. So a loneliness came up. In the waiting time, jealousy arrived. In the end of October 1818, Farah blames Joseph to the Archbishopal Consistorium, all kind of things that he actually thought a priest should not be like. In his letter, it sounds like that. Joseph was blamed for riding on boats on the river like the other shipper boys, by high waters and floods, that he plays the guitar in official, that he sings non-Christian songs, that he was talking and joking with women on the street, and that he runs around with a tobacco and a pipe on his side. The Archbiscopal Consistorium don't know what to do with his letter. So they asked the deccant of St. Georgen, the boss of Nöstler and Joseph, also a priest, what is going on in Oberndorf? He wrote back that the letter of Old Father Nöstler comes out of gentleness, that Joseph is a true priest, a brilliant preacher, his service is always full, and that he worked a lot in cases of music, even in the other parish around. When Pfarrer Nestler found out that the Dechan was not on his side, that he was on Joseph's side, through his people in Oberndorf, he brings into official that Joseph is an illegitimate child and the hangman his godfather. And it works. 90% of the people turn his back to Joseph. On morality, as they say. Even Franz Xaver Gruber, the teacher and organist, his friend, had a problem. Is this a good friend for my career? But when in the middle of December, the stress and maybe also the feeling of loneliness make the tuberculosis coming back to Joseph. Cuffing and fiber arrived. That was the moment when Franz Xaver Gruber turned around completely. Courage is coming up and he don't want to look at anymore what the old man was doing to Joseph. His reaction was that he manipulates the organ the day before Christmas Eve, so she was not working anymore. Because the organ was not working, he created a situation for the two now, that against the willing of the older priest, now with his agreement, otherwise no service, they got the chance to arrange the service Holy Eve 1818 for traditional instruments, Latin-German mixed singing, a German sermon, and in the end of the service, the first time they sing together, Joseph played the guitar, the song that he called so simple, Weihnachtslied, Christmas carol, and that we know is Silent Night, Holy Night. For the happiness of the people, because it became tradition in a lot of places on this earth, that the people sing the song in the end of the service,
I wish you a very Merry Christmas.